are already doing great and awesome things tonight in the name of Jesus. Let your oil of grace be poured upon your people, be poured upon our ancestral soil in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, let your blood be poured everywhere now in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, we are incubated by your blood, enveloped in your blood. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. Thank you, King of Glory. Every gang up again is a prayer. We set them on fire this hour. We cancel them right now. In the name of Jesus, let your blood take over. Masa Karamashi. Let the Holy Spirit begin to blow mightily upon each and every one of us and give our ancestry a new face tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, madam. Amen. Madam, friends. I welcome every one of us to the part three of this session dealing with bloodline issues, dealing with parents in the bloodline. And we are continuing our prayer using our prayer manual, The Invisible War, by Brother Uwakwe Chuku. And today, and in this moment of prayer, we are anchoring on the plans of heaven to redeem us from ancestral captivity. From ancestral captivity. Amen. And we are continuing from page 51 and following in this part three of this prayers segment. But our friends, I want to make myself clear. In the previous sessions, something that is very visible that we must be able to learn and understand from the subject we are dealing with, parents in the bloodline or enemies in the bloodline, is that the enemy gets into the bloodline so that he may flow like a river into everybody in that bloodline. Amen? So if you want to heal the person or to heal the family, wisdom demands that attention should focus on the bloodline. I give an instance that when you get to the hospital, the, the, the most professional way to really handle a, 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 an ailment is to look into the blood, to take a sample of your blood, and then investigate the blood. When you look at the blood components and begin to find out what are in the blood that are not supposed to be blood, that gives a clue and even conclusion to the situation you are going through. The blood, your blood, contains everything about you and it reveals a lot about your state of health. So it is in the spiritual realm. Amen? And I wish to make myself clear that an enemy not dealt with, with at the infancy grows roots over time, just like a tree, to become a stubborn tree, a stubborn force, to become a die-hard. So, now, here it is very clear for me that all ancestral problems, ancestral causes are products of stubborn spirits. All right? They are stubborn because the spirit behind them have grown up roots, anchoring deep in the ancestry soil. That's what they're stubborn. You see, when a tree is growing as a little plant, it's not a threat. I mean, with one hand, you could pull it up and throw it away, isn't it? If you fail to do it at the, at the beginning of the last span of that tree, a time comes when with two hands you can't pull it away. A time comes, even if you gather, everybody come and help you. Nobody will do it. But at that time, 
it had developed a taproot, a very powerful, stubborn taproot. Now, that is how it is in issues of bloodline. So, things we see that are manifesting in our lives, if we look closely, we might see a need to deal with them at the bloodline. Now, take for example, the children of pornographic addicts may never watch pornography themselves. They may not watch you. But they are likely to be trapped under the cause of lust and lascivious living. Okay? Lascivious living is a, a life in sin, which includes promiscuity, prostitution, flirting, adulterous living, and the aggressive appetite for immorality. Meanwhile, it started because the, the, the somebody upline in the ancestry had opened the door for such people to come in through pornography. My dad is manifesting the children and is taking different forms that may not directly be pornography, but may be things related to pornography, like position, flirting, and all that, all that. So the children, therefore, may receive an inheritance of moral decadence and may be struggling with this invisible spiritual force that they didn't invite themselves, but they are suffering it. They are struggling with it. And the many of them have done everything possible to come out of it, and they are struggling with it. In this case, the, the spiritual enemy orchestrating the invisible war um, have sponsored the pornographic addiction. Okay? And they have, over the years, grown deep roots in the family. You see that? <laughs> And the way that they're taking root, it becomes difficult, very difficult to deal with. But again, no matter how difficult it is, it's not a situation when I say difficult, I mean stubborn, no matter how stubborn it might prove to be, when Jesus comes into the matter, <laughs> oh my goodness, he arrests the situation. Okay? He uproots that evil tree and give you the planting of life in your family. Just like I said at the, in this part one and part two of this message, most especially in part two, I made mention of data base. And I used my to set an example what I went through so many years ago, okay? When the forces of darkness were sent into my, to my town, the city where I was born, to find out my, uh, to investigate my file, to see where to attack, to see, to have a look into my ancestry and know where we have broke the law of God. And of course, when the law is broken, there are consequences. So they want to orchestrate it. They want to bring punishment on me. Okay? Standing on the, what the law says. That Jesus did not allow them to have their way. I didn't get into fullness of that story. At uh, the end of that story, you know, when they, when they told that spirit, the principality in my town, uh, look at their mission, and they have tried to do all that and that in Potaco, the Brungate brother. Now, what the, the spirit, they were, the principality they were talking to, now said, we ourselves have tried our best to track him, to destroy him when he was born. When he was born, when his mother gave birth to him, we came to take him, but it was impossible that even because of him, we couldn't even have our free way into the family he was born. And I was listening to the conversation. <laughs> it's happening in the spirit, I tell you. Oh, Jesus. And I saw them leaving my town with shame. So I'm praying for you. Any spirit on assignment to go and investigate you, to go and scheme how to attack you, how to attack your bloodline, may they go with shame, may they live with shame. In the name of Jesus, I cover your spiritual fire and that abyss.
with the blood of Jesus. Amen, my name. Now, you know why the enemy wants us to sin? The reason why he wants us to sin is that when we sin, then a door opens for the enemy to come in. That is why we should be very prayerful and we should go and repent. When we sin, we quickly, we quickly run to God and ask him to have mercy on us. No wonder God, Jesus, has to give the church the sacrament of, of confession, the, of, of, uh, of reconciling with God, the sacrament of penance, so that when we commit sin, then we run to the Lord and cry to him for forgiveness. And he will forgive. He will show mercy. But the enemy will try to get us into sin based on what has worked for, for, for our family over the years. He wants to see if, if you could fall into the same sin of your great-grandfather so that there will be a pattern. <laughs> Jesus. So this is why we have mistakenly thought that certain things, sort of alcoholism or child abuse or genetic, uh, and, uh, some genetic diseases were predisposed due to one's physical genetic uh, family genes. <clears throat> Something's wrong somewhere. From the spiritual perspective. Okay? In reality, enemies are paddling their tenues through the bloodline. Okay? Through one's spiritual genetic makeup. The enemy. It is important to mention that bloodlines with generational causes are thriving grounds, bleeding grounds, okay, for, for spiritual enemies. Although there are other factors that brood spiritual uh, enemies in the family line, okay, like unfinished battles of your forefathers. Like unfought spiritual battles in the bloodline. Your father, your mother may have fled that battle, but they couldn't finish it. You see, every unfinished battle is dangerous. Okay? You, you, you fight a snake and uh, you cut the, the, the tail. That is when the snake becomes most dangerous. Okay? A finished job, a finished battle is a battle in which you have cut off the neck of the enemy, cut off the head, rather, of the enemy. Praise the Lord. Once the enemy is defeated, the people are free. Praise the Lord. So that is why when God is fighting your battle, he does not cut the tail of the enemy. He does not wound the enemy. God crushes. God destroys the enemy. Take the history of the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. You see that whenever God goes out to fight, he destroys the enemy. From today, that is what the scripture. You see that God doesn't attack them. God doesn't wound them. Uh -uh. He destroys them. He destroys the enemy. Okay? So when the curses are broken, the enemy is happy. <laughs> I mean, when somebody has created a room for the curse to come into the family, the enemy is happy. That's what I mean. Sorry. But when the curses are broken, they're destroyed, then the legal right of the enemy associated with that cause is terminated. Cause gives the enemy legal right. I tell you the truth. Again, I don't even have time to get in details on this aspect because it, I actually need to, we actually need more lessons on this really. But because, because we are time constrained, there are limits that uh, I can't be able to encroach. So, but we, we need to understand that causes, sins, they give the enemy legal ground to operate in our lives. But when the cause is broken, the sins are forgiven, subject to confessing them to the Lord, and they're repenting thereof, then the cause is terminated. And the consequence of the sin, um, of course, shown mercy by, to us by God. God gives us the mercy and all that. So we need to understand these things critically, my friend. I wish to share with you 
uh, um, the, the, the man called Gideon. The Bible just tells us a, a lot about Gideon. Uh, and uh, we see what will happen in the life of Gideon replace itself in our lives in one way or the other, especially when something is wrong with the bloodline. Gideon grew up to meet the problem in his family. He wasn't the cause of the problem. Okay? But when he grew up, he saw that the Amalekites um, were against them, were against the people of God. The enemies, they were against the people of God. They wanted to destroy them. Gideon was not happy with what was going in the, on in the land. He, he saw a problem that his forefathers could not solve. It, it was breaking his heart. But, but he could not do anything about it. He was living in hiding. Gideon was living in hiding. The Midianites were against the people of God. The, the uh, Amalekites were against the, the, the people of God. You see that? And, and it, that, that was the situation in the land. And Gideon was living in a hiding. But one day, God told Gideon, look, this problem you are running away from, I have actually put a solution to that problem in you. You are the solution to the problem of your family. So Gideon answered the call of God, and he grew up to meet the problems in the land and decided to deal with the problem by destroying the altar, the altar of Baal in his father's house. God wanted to use Gideon to deliver his people. Then there was an obstacle. God told him, look, you have to look into your house, look into your bloodline. You see, your father served Baal. And then you have to go and destroy Baal. Then when you finish that job, then you come, we talk. <laughs> so Gideon in the night went and destroyed the altar of Baal in his father's house. And then after that, God used Gideon mightily. Not before he destroyed the, the, the altar of Baal in the house. It was after he destroyed the, uh, the, the altar of Baal in the house. That was when God used him mightily. You see, we need to learn something from here. If there is an altar that has been set up for the enemy to worship the devil like altar of shrines in your family, if that altar is still there, breathing, not still alive, still speaking, you cannot go far in life. You can't go far. You know, even if you tell yourself a born again, look, you cannot go far. I am telling you from a spirit, you can't go far until you deal with the enemy in the house, until you deal with the altar and set it on fire. Destroy the altar. Fight the altar. Oh, yes. Gideon had an encounter with the angel of God. Gideon received the message of God. Gideon had a conversation with the angel of God. Gideon was God's man. In fact, you know that God called him a man of fellow, a man of fellow. That was the title, the, the, the name God called Gideon. He was a friend of God. In our, in our time today, you could say that Gideon was born again. Okay? Now, but look at it. Even though he was born again, even though there was no saying God told him that he had to reconcile with it, he had to reconcile with him by going to confess his sin. God didn't tell him those things. If Gideon was living in sin, God would have told him first, go and reconcile with me. Come to me, repent. But God didn't tell him that. God told him to go and destroy the altar of Baal, his father's house. Why? Because the altar of Baal was an impediment to the victory and to the ministry that God wants to achieve through Gideon. And so Gideon had to listen to God and destroy the altar of Baal in the father's house. My devil of God, I want to tell you something. It is time for us to understand how things go on in the spirit. It's not you're not praying the way you're supposed to pray. You are praying so well that there is an altar speaking against you in your father's house. If you are not there to that altar, you are not going to go 
far. If you die, you go to heaven. That, that, that has nothing to do with your salvation. Salvation is already defined by you accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Many people who are born again, who are in Christ, speaking in tongues, receiving Holy Communion, full of fire, some of them have unfinished battle in the house. They have an altar speaking against them in their family. And when that altar is not dealt with, situation will not be arrested. I'm not trying to fight you, but I'm just telling you how it is. <laughs> and remember, just to, for you to understand, I'm just fair on this. I used myself to set an example yesterday. You remember the story I gave about how Jesus appeared to me live and told me that my problem is from my my ancestry, my bloodline, that that was where my problem came from. Okay? So this was issues with my my bloodline. Okay? And he told me, you know what? I I want you to, to take a priest and conduct mass in your father's house. Okay? But then, uh, and then to do deliverance. Then I would not tell him, but Lord, you, you can speak your word, and the devil, the enemies will leave me. And I told him, they did the deliverance on me. After when I said that, he looked at me, I, oh, you need to see the eyes of Jesus, so wonderful. So I, looked into his eyes, I could see love. I, I could see a man very pleased with the faith I demonstrated by saying, Lord, you can speak your word here, and the spirits all these bloodline issues, ancestral forces will leave my family. I saw, I saw in his eyes, a man pleased with that effect I, I showed. Yet, after doing that deliverance to me, he said, told me, take a piece and go to your father's house and let the mass be, be done in your father's house with the deliverance. Okay? And it was when it was done that I tell you, doors opened for me and my people. Doors opened. Doors opened. Doors of blessings opened. Okay, people began to marry, people began to get admissions into school, and the animals have also got admission into higher, into graduate uh, studies and all that. Things changed. Okay, that must be changed. So I'm not trying to fight you, I'm telling you my own story. So if you do the same thing, you get the same result. Amen? So you must to like Gideon, rise up to stop every demonic handover, to stop every demonic carryover. In your family, you must have to. You, have to. You, you see, Gideon, he met the problem, like I said, but he met a problem that was handed over to him, that was handed over to his own people, his own generation. And all that Gideon needed to do was to carry it over to the next generation, just like his own father carried it over to him. Because the father of his father handed it over to his own father. So there was a handover from the grandfather to the father. And there was a handover from the father to him. And all that Gideon needed was to do another handover, to carry it over to the next generation. But Gideon said, it is time for me to confront this problem. I'm tired of this handover and carryover. I will not carry over this problem again. I will not be an agent of handover. I'm going to deal with this problem today. This brother problem to my family. My poor father could not solve it. My father could not solve it. But God is going to use him as a Gideon in my time to solve the problems of my family in the name of Jesus. Can somebody begin to pray now and come on down my child? Let the power of God begin to move in the name of Jesus. That God is going to use me to deliver my people. God is going to use me to solve the problems of my people in the name of Jesus. God is going to use me to destroy every satanic agenda, every demonic handover, I will not be part of it. Every demonic carryover, I will not be part of it. I cancel it now. I cancel it now. I surround them now. I surround the accuser. Every accuser of my family, let them receive Holy Ghost. Fire! Yasakarababa! Begin to pray now! Begin to pray now! Call on Jesus! Call on Jesus! Let the power of God begin to vindicate you! Let the power of God begin to arrest and destroy every speaking altar! Every voicing altar! Every altar that is speaking against your destiny! Let them catch fire! Let them catch fire! Let them catch fire! In the name of Jesus! 
Jesus. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, my Katarabashi. My Eke Makuru Muzuri Mamakinde Rebashinde. Reke Te Bakaya Mashi. Masundu Rekanda. My Karabashi. Holy God. I say, oh, I say, oh, holy God. God of God, I say, oh, come, I say, oh, holy God, I say, oh, I say, oh, holy God, arise and scatter, holy God, arise and scatter, arise and scatter, holy God, arise and scatter. Every part of the earth around us, arise and scatter. Every chain of the earth around us, arise and scatter. Holy Ghost, 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 arise and scatter. My dear people of God, when you decide to use prayer to cut off the, the legs of the enemy, stamping their evil footprints in your bloodline, then you have decided to confront the problem. When would you decide to cut off the, the legs of the enemy, the stamping their evil footprints in your bloodline? When would you decide to do that? The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 2 to 3, I will punish the Amalekites for what they did, for what they did in opposing the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. Now, go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Do not spare them. Do not spare them. This is a command. From who? From God himself. My dear friends, the Lord wants to use you to punish the enemy messing up with your bloodline. Do you hear that? God will deliver you if you will answer his call. God will use you to deliver your people if you answer his call. Always remember the case of Gideon. When we respond to the call of God, we get delivered and the people get delivered. Gideon was delivered and the, his family, his people, Israel, the people of God were also delivered. Okay? So when we reconcile with the call of God, when we answer the call of God, then God will begin to move mightily. <laughs> With the armor of prayer, we go to war, and they will completely destroy. Not partial war, not partial destruction. Completely, God is fighting; He completely destroys. So God told, God gave a command in First Samuel chapter two, verse three. He said, "I will punish the Amalekites for what they have done in the prison Israel. Now go and attack the Amalekites, and they utterly destroy. That is completely, completely destroy." completely. Do you see that? God is saying they should completely, not not wounding them all. Uh-uh. Not partially attacking them. Absolutely destroying them. Completely. Destroy them completely. <laughs> Woo! Don't hurt them. Just destroy them completely. That is what God is telling you to do. That is to say, do not spare them. Enough is enough. When will you rise to fight for your family? And we are crying to God at the hour of this prayer and asking him to help us in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, ask him to use this prayer to get into every area of your family. Let him reveal to you what needs to be known concerning your family. Sometimes we know that things are going wrong, but we don't even know what to, where to start. Let God give you where to start. Let God direct you. Ask the Lord to help you pinpoint the areas in your life, in your family and bloodline, 
where the spiritual enemies are hiding. It is time to address this matter. It is time to expose them in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, mighty Jesus, may you reveal to me the secrets of all the destiny eating strangers in my family, in my bloodline. Father, may you reveal them to me in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, ay, 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 ay. any evil power that has a track record of my family, that has a history of my father or history of my mother or history of my family, the history of my lineage. May God Almighty destroy that track record in the name of Jesus. Every track record that is used against me, may, that is used to enforce me into a life of shame, a life of disfavor, may God destroy that power in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, every power of the enemy to make me to live in captivity, let God destroy now. Destroy that power. May the Holy Spirit move like fire in the name of Jesus. May the fire of the Almighty God begin to delete. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Delete my name from evil records. Ask God to delete your name, the names of your family, to delete your family name, to delete the name of the bloodline from every evil record, from every unfavorable record, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, Holy Spirit, delete, 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 delete every name of my family from evil records, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray, my people, pray, my people. Yes, my Lord. Cry to Jesus for help. Let him help you. Cry to him for help now. As you cry to him, he is going to help you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Cry to him. Cry to him. As you cry to him, he will answer you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. This is a time to cry for help. And we are turning on prayer point number four. Praying Psalm 77. Psalm 77 was the prayer of David crying for help. Can you cry to the Lord now and say, Lord Almighty, I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. Come and help my family. Come and help my people. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. And the Bible says, in Psalm 77, verse 1 and following, I cry out to the Lord for help. I cry out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out on tiring hands, and I will not be comforted. Hello, Jesus, I remembered you, Lord, and I groaned. I meditated, and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. Hey! I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated, and my spirit asked, Will the Lord reject me forever? Hell! Will he never show me favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? No. Oh. Then Psalm 77 verse 10 and following says, Then I thought, so this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display, you display, can someone help me there? You display your power among your people. You display your miracles among your people. With your mighty hands, you redeem your people the descendants of Jacob. Jesus. 
The water has saw you. God, the water saw you and uh, receded. Hell. The clouds poured down water at your presence. The arrows resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the wild wind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for this time. We tap into the prayer of the psalm and we claim the completely this prayer of the psalm in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, mighty God. We give you glory. We give you worship. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Akaya Mashinderabu. Rakuri Make. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Eshadai. You are a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. From here we have one. For we call on Jesus' name. From here we have our own. As we call on Jesus' name. In our course we flow. As we call on Jesus' name. Vibration we come. As we call on Jesus' name. Our healing shall come, restoration shall come, our liberty shall come, as we call on Jesus' name. Call him, Jesus, 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 mighty warrior, Jesus, 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 our deliverer, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, our liberator, Jesus, 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 our restorer, Jesus, 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 miracle worker, Jesus, 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 our defender, Jesus, 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 miracle worker, Jesus, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. With the prayer point number five, we ask our Lord Jesus Christ to let the tinsing healing waters of our baptism to flow back through our bloodline to completely purify our bloodlines, our family line from dreadful spiritual contaminations in the name of jesus yes my lord there is a water called the healing water it is a water that comes from jesus it is the water of our baptism and the water that made all the children of god the water that brought us into the broad line of jesus that is the healing water it is the water that gives life the healing water that comes from jesus the water of life. Oh, Jesus. And let that healing water flow back through our bloodline and completely purify our bloodline in the name of Jesus. And standing on prayer point number six, we decree that every tree which the Heavenly Father did not plant in my life or in my family must be put it down in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Every tree, every tree which the Heavenly Father did not plant in my life, in my life, in my family, must be uprooted now, not tomorrow, must be uprooted now. As I am praying now, as I begin to pray, let that evil tree be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray, my people, pray, my people. Every tree not planted by your Father in heaven, let that tree be destroyed. Let that tree catch fire. 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Standing on prayer point number seven, I release myself and my loved ones from the umbrella of collective captivity. Oh, Jesus, there is an umbrella called the umbrella of collective captivity. A big umbrella, like a canopy. Everybody in the family is under that canopy. It's like a big tree with a big shed. Okay? And everybody in the family, they're all under the tree. In your family tree, you're under the tree. Now, if the tree is an evil tree, then everybody under the umbrella tree is suffering from collective captivity. So we are releasing ourselves and our loved ones from the umbrella of collective captivity. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Prayer point number eight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command every the wicked rising up against my bloodline. Let them be rendered important in the name of Jesus. Every rod of the wicked in my family, every rod of the wicked in my ancestry, let them be rendered important in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray now. Begin to pray now. Let that evil rod be broken now. Let them be broken now. Let them be destroyed now. For the Bible says, if I want to find a dream, Oh, Jesus, Rama Kerebose, the Lord of the wicked will not remain in the house of the righteous in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, in Isaiah 14, verse 5, and the Bible says, and I have broken the Lord of the wicked, and I have broken the Lord of the wicked. This is the time for the Lord of the wicked to be broken. As somebody is praying now, the Lord of the wicked is broken. Every Lord of the wicked over your family, let them be broken now. Let them be broken now in the name of Jesus. You begin to talk to him now. Let somebody begin to pray. Let somebody begin to pray. Jesus. Jesus, pray my people. The rod of the wicked shall be broken now. And I command that rod to be broken in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. The Lord Almighty is working now. The Lord is rendering that rod important. Let that rod go important in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, the ancient of days. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Arise, O God, the third of these is cast away. Arise, O my God, the third of these is cast away. O God, our God, arise in our family. Oh God, oh, our Father, oh, arise in our lineage. Oh God, oh, our Father, oh, arise in our destiny. Oh God, oh, our God, oh, arise in our life. Oh God, oh, our Father, oh, arise. Jesus. And my friends, we are hereby invited to prayer point number nine. And uh, through this prayer, we are about to pray now. We are stopping the transmission of causes through our ancestry in the name of Jesus. And uh, at this point, if you have the crucifix or the cross, you lift it up. And if you don't have it, there is a mighty cross, a mighty crucifix in my right hand, and I have lifted it up. If you don't have yours, you tap into the one I am lifting up. You join your hand to my hand in the spirit. So as we stand on prayer point number 9A, we are going to place the cross of Jesus over the head of everyone in your bloodline. We are going to place them one by one. So this is what is taking place as we are lifting the cross of Jesus over our heads, over the heads of everyone in our family, everybody in the bloodline. Let's begin to touch the blood of Jesus and let the blood of Jesus begin to touch them. Father, we are placing the cross on the forehead of everybody in our bloodline. Let them begin to appropriate the covenant that 
you have given to us on the cross of Calvary, the covenant of life. And the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11, as for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from waterless pit. And so at this time, we are standing on Zechariah 9, verse 11, to stand on the covenant that Jesus has given to us, and let by his covenant, let everyone in our family line begin to experience freedom. Let everyone be free. People shall be free. My people shall be free. This was the mandate of God when he called Moses to go and tell Pharaoh that let my people go. It is time for Pharaoh to leave your family. Every hand of Pharaoh holding your family to ransom. May the power of the blood of Jesus begin to speak for you now. Begin to deliver your family in the name of Jesus. The power of God is moving now. And let the angels carry this cross and touch the, the head of everybody in our bloodline and deliver them. That cross in the family, that trouble in the bloodline, the problem in the bloodline came through one man, through somebody. And through somebody, salvation is coming to a bloodline. Could it be you? And if you are the one that is making prayer, then God is using you to solve the problem in the bloodline. And may God use you to bring that salvation to your people in the name of Jesus. And I will stand on prayer point number 9B and ask God Almighty to send his angels to encamp around us and to administer to us his divine healing power, even in every area of genetic disability in the name of Jesus. Every problem of genetic disability May God begin to heal us, genetically be healed. Let people be genetically be healed. Uh, every bloodline that is suffering disability, may they be healed now. Let healing take place in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, begin to talk to him now. Every form of genetic disability in the family, in the bloodline, a time of healing is taking place. And the Lord is touching your people. Yes, my Lord. Pray with prayer point number nine. Jesus, we are going to replace, or we pray and ask Jesus to replace all bondage in our family lineage with the bonding of a holy family. Now, listen carefully. Bondage is captivity. But the bonding, bonding of a family to Jesus is unity, oneness, bonding, bond, bond, to bond, to form an entity, to become one. I hope you're communicating. Or where to ask what I'm communicating. Amen? Oh, no. bonding. <laughs> you go, something is broken. Then you go and get something, a glue, to bond it. That's what we're talking about. That we are going to get bonded, okay, with Jesus, becoming one with Him, so that bondage is replaced with bonding. So, with the prayer point of my 9C, we are asking our Lord Jesus Christ to replace all bondage in our family lineage, to be replaced with the bonding of a holy family love in the name of jesus prayer point number 9d we ask our lord jesus christ to destroy every tree of problems in the family let them dry up to the roots in the name of jesus and prayer point number 9e oh jesus i decree that from today a new life is springing forth from my roots from my family tree in the name of Jesus, prayer for my F. I block every spiritual access to my bloodline with the blood of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. I block every spiritual access to my bloodline. I block them with the blood of Jesus so that the enemy will not accept our bloodline again. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. This is the mighty God we are serving. We are covering our lives with the mighty power of the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Marebose. 
Let the power of God bless us one by one. Talk to him now. Present every form of problem in the bloodline that you have not participated before in the prayer or they have not presented to the Lord before. It is time for you to present them to the Lord. Begin to talk to him now. This is coming to the last segment of the prayer. We are pouring our hearts to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Mata Kayaba. Holy Spirit, touch people. Holy Spirit, sanctify us. Sanctify our family line in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Let my people pray now. Call on him, call on him. He will never despise you. He will answer your prayers. He is a mighty God. He will never forsake you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Your people are presenting their families to you. Papa, hear us. Hear the prayers of your people. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, El Shaddai. In the name of Jesus, you are a glorious God, who is like our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And so I invite everyone to join me as we pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. The prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, you find that in page 19 of our prayer manual. The Invisible War, Volume 1, by Brother Uwapwe Chukun. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, one, two, three, go. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the malice and snares of the devil. May God rebook him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell Satan, the all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And we'll go to the next page. Page. 20 to pray the animal Christi prayer, otherwise called the soul of Christ. Soul of Christ. We need to unite and be bonded with the soul of Christ so that we may be one with him. Are you there now? Page 20. One, two, three, go. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. May I never be separated from you again. From the wicked one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me, and close to you, bid me, that with your saints and angels, I may be praising you forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Father, we thank you. Begin to thank the Lord now for the wonders he has done. Just begin to thank him. He is a wonderful God. He has done it again. Begin to thank Him. Father, be glorified. Ancient of days, be glorified. We appreciate you for what you have done. In the name of Jesus. We cover the prayers with the blood of Jesus. We cover this prayer with the blood of Jesus. We cover this prayer with the blood of Jesus. We are going to do it seven times. The fourth time, we cover this prayer with the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. The fifth time, we cover this prayer with the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Number six, we cover this prayer with the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. And for the last time, we cover this prayer 
with the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Agent of Days. We appreciate you, Papa, for all you have done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Jesus has given us the authority to trample upon scorpions and set us and the Shabbat. No enemies for us. We are walking in dominion. Our God has given us the authority to so approve and to plant, to cause and to bless. And we shall buy no enemies the heart. We are walking in dominion. Walking in dominion. We are 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 walking in dominion. I am walking in dominion. I am walking in dominion. We are walking in dominion. We are walking in dominion. Amen. Amen. Thank you, mighty Jesus, for the victory you have given to us to walk in dominion tonight. And we appreciate you, Papa. We we'll cover the prayers with the blood of Jesus. We we'll cover the instrument you use with the most precious blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I invite you, wherever you are, to lift our brother and our sister up to the Lord in prayer. Just pray that God will replenish them, that God will feed them to the brim with his power in the name of Jesus. Father, refresh them, renew them. Oh, Jesus. As they are laboring for the good of us, Father, may you also send your angels to labor in their vineyards to plant trees of favor, trees of grace, trees of testimonies, trees of good health, trees of open doors. Fruitfulness shall be their portion. Favor shall be their middle name. Grace shall be their first name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What's the cover? Prayer fasting of today. May God lead us in this prayer fasting of today and uh, use the prayer to glorify his name as we shall be having our first Saturday today. We ask God to give us the strength and the inspirations in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And all the spirits have gone out of the country prayer will command them to mighty the abyss in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My dear friends, tomorrow, or well, today, this is Saturday for those in this time, very important information. Our first Saturday devotion is today, okay, by 12 noon Eastern time. If you have not been in the first Saturday devotion, please don't miss this one. Don't miss the first study devotion. We know how it is in the ministry when we do first study devotion. So invite your friends. Our blessed mother is already there waiting for us to come with her son. They are there waiting. So don't keep them waiting. We're supposed to be there on time. Amen. So I'm going to ask people to help me and help our rosary team by praying for us. And if you know you are going to sow a seed of prayer, praying for us. You see, when we're talking of seed in this minute, we're talking about people pray. <laughs> people pray for our brother, pray for us. See, that's the seed we're collecting. <laughs> amen, madam, amen. If you know you want to sow the seed, now I want you to sow the seed of prayer to lift your voice to the Lord and pray. Anyhow you want to pray, let just pray as the voice will direct you. You can pray the rosary to support that program. Okay, the first Saturday devotion program. You can pray the psalm. It is open for you. Okay, now our fasting of today, sister one, is going to be for the first Saturday devotion. For God to use this first Saturday devotion to do wonders in Jesus' name. For our blessed mother to visit all families mightily in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I wish to 
remind us that the youth nation will meet him by 1 p.m. Eastern time. Please remind them. Amen. And I want to thank the parents for bringing their children to the prayer ministry last time. The numbers are already increasing now. But please let it not be because Borokwe of Fanamado came to pray for them. We want the number to keep increasing. So encourage them to come tomorrow or to come today. This is already Saturday for Eastern Timers. In Jesus' name. To so we'll cover the youth ministry board of Jesus and ask God to bless and protect them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're also praying that we understand that uh, Saturday is usually our our testimonies. So please make sure you contact Brother Simon Wigwe for your testimony. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to tell you something very, very important. When is the birthday of our Blessed Mother Mary? I'm just pausing so that somebody will help me. The first, the, the birthday of our Blessed Virgin Mary is tomorrow. That is the 8th of September. September 8th. That is the birthday of our Blessed Mother Mary. And today is the eve of her birthday. Okay? And so, in this first Saturday devotion, which is the eve of our Blessed Mother's birthday, Mother will give you cake. Don't you know that? Won't you come to collect your mother's birthday cake? Well, probably is already there. For me and my family, we're already there collecting our own cake. So make sure you come with your family to collect your cake. Special request tomorrow. In fact, today as we as we are coming to have the eve for our, our blessed mother's birthday, we are going to ask her to give her the cake of fertility, the cake of strong spiritual life, the cake of favor, of grace. Remember, she's full of grace. So this is the kind of cake we need. So if you know you need this kind of cake, then come in, come before the time. Tell mama you need the cake, that's all. Okay? If she would in John 2, tell Jesus that the one has finished it. For something she cannot do. Talk of the cake that she would do. She's bringing herself. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. So let us all of us be there in Jesus' name for our Blessed Mother's birthday Eve. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please don't forget to pray for your brother. May the Almighty God bless every one of us. And we pray that as we get into this fasting, that it shall be awesome, shall be glorious. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. After tomorrow's first day devotion, brother, we'll be having a program somewhere in South Carolina. So please, I need your prayers and then call the intercessors to stand the gap and for every more of the ministry to stand the gap for brother. May God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Shepherd Days. So please don't forget, there will be testimony today, this Saturday. Then after the testimony, we'll meet in the night. Just want to make it clear. Be grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Now, the the day five is still on this same bloodline. I tell you that bloodline issue is a very deep matter. So we are concluding the bloodline prayers tomorrow midnight on Saturday. Okay? Surely his goodness and mercy are for us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Unmuted.
Hey, 